My guest today is Alan Kaler. He's a professional speaker from Saskatoon. I'm Mark Franklin, host of Career Buzz and practice leader of Career Cycles. Alan, thanks for uh, joining us here this afternoon. Happy to be here, Mark. So you just gave a great talk here at the Your Workplace Conference, and one of the quotes that you started with was from Robin Williams. All it takes is a beautiful fake smile to hide an injured soul. How does that speak to you? How does that relate to your story? Well, I think I can relate to that in a number of ways, and I was always the individual who wore the mask, and the world was literally my stage, and the story that I would share on the outside was very different than the one that was on the inside. And as, as I alluded to earlier, I was the president of the school, athlete of the year, captain of sports teams, but on the inside was that very different story, struggling with mental illness, addictions, and it was lonely, and it's exhausting to wear that mask. And I think a lot of us sometimes have to wear that mask to, to perform, but it's also important to remove the mask at the end of the day and take a look at what's actually going on inside. You gave the example in your own story of one individual who really helped, who paid attention, who listened. And, and I think that's what we want to talk about now is how that happens. First in your own story, how is it, who, who helped you? How did that happen? Ian McNeil was the one man who changed my life literally in only 10 minutes. And I think that we all have those basic needs, see me, hear me. And uh, for Ian, he approached me. He was actually a college instructor or university professor, and he approached me after a class, and he just said, come to my office, Al, let's talk. But his segue into our conversation was different because often we'll just do that robotic, how are you doing? And he just changed it slightly and said, how are you doing today, Alan? And 7% of the way that we communicate is verbal, and the other 93% is through the mannerisms, the posture, but I knew in that moment that there was nothing but compassion, there was no judgment, and that was the moment where I actually took off the mask and I just talked openly and freely, and he listened. He didn't fix me, he listened, and then secondly, he gave me resources, which was ultimately up to me, so he empowered me to use my voice in times of need so I could be successful. Nice. So let, let's think about that, say in the workplace. You know, there are a lot of people who are suffering silently, they're wearing their masks in the workplace. And, and sometimes we get aware of this, but we don't know what to say. And, you know, in your story, the way, the way you were helped, wh what do you do if you're in the workplace and you start to suspect or you actually see visible signs of somebody who's in distress? You know, it's so hard to know what to do. Often we just turn away, we walk away, because we don't know what to do. So what, what can we do? That's right. We, we almost walk into it, as, as I used to, with this mentality that we have to fix. And if we can understand that it's not our job to fix, but the power of listening, so that whole two ears, one mouth for a reason. And exactly like you said, if you were to walk into a room and see a woman with her head on the table crying, or if it were a, a man with his head on the table crying, what's the approach? And I think for me, what I've learned is just to say, I don't mean to pry, but I just want to let you know I'm concerned. And I'd be more than happy to listen if you ever needed to talk. And that's powerful because now they know that they've been seen and they know that there's a place where they can go to be heard. And ultimately, whether or not they act on that invite is completely out of your control. But having said that, if they do act, that we just sit back and allow them that opportunity to listen. Because I think that everybody is begging to get some of that stuff into the light. But often they don't trust. They don't trust for very good reason. And that's that whole saying, two ears, one mouth for a reason. And later, for you, you know that at least you did something. Right, you can't control what people do eventually, but at least you know that you did something and you won't regret having said nothing. That's exactly it. And I, I shared that before too with the, the biggest takeaway for me losing my best friend to suicide was that in those moments, say and do everything so you don't have to look back thinking should have done more because guilt, guilt is uh, a useless emotion. You know? and, and if we understand that we all just want to be seen and heard, why not take that opportunity? I love the, uh, the four powerful words, you know, so let's take this story. Let's say sure. you go, you see that, uh, that woman in the workplace and she has her head down crying and you go up to her and you say, uh, I don't mean to pry, I just want to let you know I'm concerned. Uh, I'd be more than happy to listen if you ever need to talk. Those were your strategies. Yeah. And then what happens when she says, you can't possibly understand? So I think that everybody's walls are up and they're up for good reason. But the moment that you say, help me to understand, 
then you'll see and feel a shift in energy. And once it's back to them and, and they begin to talk, then it's inevitable that healing will take place. Beautiful. So, so helpful, Alan. Thanks so much for joining us here on the uh, Career Buzz interview. Really appreciate it. Honored. Thank you, Mark.